Hello, and welcome to a very different awards ceremony in an environment that's quite a change to what we've known before. Usually we'd be together with special guests and colleagues to acknowledge some outstanding people and to celebrate our professions. And this year we'll still hear from the Minister for Health, Brad Hazard, the Secretary of New South Wales Health, Elizabeth Coff, and some other special guests, just all in a virtual way, in a safe way. It also means that for the first time we can come across the state to celebrate together. So there'll be talk of challenges, which is not surprising considering the year that 2020 has turned out to be. But most importantly, even in this virtual format, we'll still be celebrating achievement, inspiration and professionalism in what is International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife. So it's time to celebrate. I hope that you're going to enjoy the 2020 Excellence in Nursing and Midwifery Award. Wyomi, Nia Elise McCarthy McFan, a proud Darug and Bidjigal woman of the Eora Nation. I would like to acknowledge all traditional custodians of the lands in which we, as New South Wales Health staff, work in each day. Our connection to country is intrinsic. It is our being. It is our connection to our ancestors, our dreaming. It is through our connection to country that we, as nurses and midwives, are able to draw on the strength to be the voice for our people. Biri Wagal Na Nia, Nun Lial Galani, Nun Bamarad Bangani. So please walk with me to respect the elders, both past and present, and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people working within New South Wales Health today. Please collaborate with us to lead lasting change to my people, whose land it is, was, and will always be. Did you, Gara? Thank you, Elise, for that beautiful acknowledgement of country. So I too would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands in which we meet today. And I pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging. And also would like to welcome all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us today in this wonderful celebration. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the Excellence in Nursing and Modifery Awards for 2020. We're streaming the show via the New South Wales Health website and you'll be able to tweet and post along. Just remember to hashtag exceptional care and hashtag EINMA2020. In a year that has been punctuated by devastating bushfires and floods and a life-changing pandemic, you've continued to excel and to respond in ways that showcase nurses and midwives as being agile, resourceful, innovative, unstoppable, and at the very centre of our healthcare system. So let's begin the eighth annual Excellence in Nursing and Midwifery Awards. We'll meet the finalists and the winners in seven award categories. But first, let's pause and reflect on the year that's been. During 2020, uh, there's been a lot of trauma. I was involved in the New Year's Eve bushfires that come across really quickly. We saw the smoke and we rushed home and it was basically fighting the bushfire straight away. The whole sky went black and trees and leaves and everything was going everywhere. It was, it was a frightening time. We were like, we might come home to nothing. We had members of staff who were intensely worried about their own families. We had other staff that couldn't get home. We had the road cut off at either end. And we cried compassionately with those that came in covered in smoke that had lost their homes. One young nurse down in the Shoalhaven who was at work and she just asked me where she could get a second 
uniform from because the only article of clothing she had on was the uniform that she was wearing the night she came to work when the fire just unexpectedly came through and destroyed her entire home. But she was still back at work and just doing what she had to do. So it is a bit of a cliche, that resilience, but nurses and midwives do that. If you think about the last 12 months, it began with the bushfires, that we then had a period of flood, and then we landed with, with COVID. I also want to remind the community that this is, a, this is a long game. It's a team game. To stay committed to the public health system, to keep turning up, uh, to keep bringing their professionalism, uh, it's been tremendous. It takes courage, it takes commitment. I think what it did ultimately is challenge you to look at your resilience personally, you know, dig deep and find the resources we needed to just have our own resilience. I've also been really pleased to see how people have joined forces. People have worked together in teams who've never been together before. People have used each other in ways they've never used each other before. And, and that shows a lot of possibility for the future, I think. Yeah. It's great to be here for the excellence in nursing and midwifery awards. It's my honour to be a part of these very important awards that of course acknowledge and celebrate the immense contributions nurses and midwives of New South Wales make every year, but particularly this year. As we've just seen, it's been an extraordinary year that has highlighted the compassion, the knowledge, skill, humanity of our nurses and midwives. I'd like to acknowledge all of the nurses and midwives who continue to step up in these extraordinary times. We're so appreciative, I am so appreciative, for all the nurses and midwives who've worked in such diverse clinical environments to provide exceptional care to every person, every time. Through the show today, we will hear from some other people in New South Wales Health who have worked tirelessly through this unprecedented year. And they include Elizabeth Coff, our Secretary, Phil Minns, our Deputy Secretary of People, Culture and Governance, and of course, Jackie Cross, Chief Nursing and Midwifery Officer. I'm also delighted that Louisa Hope, the Louisa Hope Fund for Nurses will be here later in the show. And special thanks to the awards judging panel who had the pleasure and the pain of choosing the 2020 finalists and winners. There are more than 53,000 nurses and midwives caring for patients, families and the community in New South Wales. I want to offer my personal thanks and congratulations to every nurse and every midwife in New South Wales for the amazing effort, commitment and courage you've all displayed this year. And I want to thank you for the key role you've played in this world-class healthcare system. I also want to make sure all of you are out there watching, knowing how grateful I am as your minister for the professional way you've responded to so much change, so much difficulty, pushing through to provide safe, quality care. The first award today is for the team of the year. It's an award given to a team who really went above and beyond this year. There were so many amazing team stories amongst the nominees that spoke of collaboration, compassion, person-centred care. No matter what was needed, you did it. In a year where teamwork has been fundamental to success, there are three finalists for the 2020 team of the year. As COVID-19 became more within Australia, we knew we needed to get a team together to be able to start testing the community. I think what made the team work so well together was that they were all so innovative. It did become apparent that uh, for COVID-19 testing, one size did not fit all community um, clients uh, and we needed to be adaptive to make sure that we met the needs of the community in all different areas. So for us to be a finalist, uh, I think we've done something really special. They really deserve it, to be honest. They really deserve, um, and, and they're all humbled to be finalists. In my 15 years on the Burns unit, I've never seen a busier time than we have seen this year. So the bushfires first started in November, then had the volcano disaster right in the middle. The thing with this as well is they were coming to work and they were dealing with all of the patient's trauma, and then the girls were going home as well, and they would have to look at the TV that was also constantly bringing up things like the volcanoes and the bushfires and um, even when you go out and see your family and friends they always try and 
ask you what's going on and you trying to get away from your work and basically they were dealing with it 24 7 they'll come into work and dealing with it but they were wonderful they were really good i'm really excited about our team being nominated for team of the year it's great to be appreciated for the work that we did in that time so i think the team's been nominated um, for the outstanding care that we give our patients they're willing to change and the programs that we've um, put in place throughout the ward to improve um, patient care. We still, to this day, we had, uh, we've had patients that come back and bring us little sweets and we've got a banana farmer who brings us boxes of bananas and it's very nice to see uh, the care that we give is recognised by, by, the, by the patients and their families. And I'm just so proud of my team and the, being acknowledged um, for this award. What a fantastic and inspiring lineup of team finalists. Congratulations to all of you. And the winner of our first excellence in nursing and midwifery award for 2020, the team of the year is Shell Harbour Hospital's COVID-19 assessment clinical team. The team culture was one of um, particularly of kindness and collaboration. You know, they were just so amazing and I'm really proud that uh, I was part of that team. We created a bond that still exists um, and I catch up with them when I can because they were all so innovative. So they were always coming to me with ideas of how we can improve processes. Professionally, I think they will take away that, although it's been difficult and challenging, um, they know that they can achieve great things. I'd also like to thank um, the Director of Nursing, Kerry Shanahan, for giving me the opportunity and having faith in me to lead that team. And I know that the team are gonna be so excited to hear that that we've won. You guys are an amazing team and wow, look how far you've come. We've outshone the whole of New South Wales. Woo! Go team! <laughs> Thank you to Minister Hazard, the Minister for Health and Medical Research for kicking off the event with the first award. And my warmest congratulations to the team of the year. It is fitting perhaps that the winning team is one put together in response to COVID-19. In this truly extraordinary year, it's been inspiring to witness our nurses and midwives respond to new ways of working, remaining agile and flexible as they've dealt with natural disasters and then COVID-19. Amidst a pandemic and in the year declared International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife by the World Health Organization, if ever there was a time to put the commitment and compassion of our nurses and midwives on the centre stage, it is now. I thank you all for your continued dedication in ensuring the best possible health care for the people of New South Wales. I'm here to present Midwife of the Year Award. We all know how important our midwives are to give women families and babies the very best possible start to life. Now, here are some young students from Sydney with some further thoughts on the importance of midwifery. When the person's pregnant, they get oh, the yeah, baby but out. The, the person who like takes out the stitches and then the stitches. Oh, yeah. they take the babies out. Yeah, yeah, they take the babies out. <laughs> take the babies out. The little bobby. When a mother is giving birth, a midwife is there to like keep them calm and relaxed. Midwife is a great person who helps make sure we come into the world safely. And my mum's midwife is so amazing that she named me after her. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna give birth to a beautiful baby. Doing great, just breathe. It's all good. Everything's just gonna be fine. No need to worry about it. Everything's gonna be just fine. You're gonna be so happy when the baby's in the world with you. You were very brave. A midwife would tell someone to push their baby out. That would be mm. painful. I mean, it sounds quite nice, but yeah. I don't want have a sip. another. 
annoying problem to deal with. My mum always says, no, I am not having another baby. I have you and that's final. She'd say, no. no. She'd be like, sure. Definitely, I love, she'd say, yeah. They're cute, they're adorable, um, and you can help them with whatever you need. If you're like bored or something, there's just a baby right next to you to keep you comfortable. And if you're lonely, baby right next to you, done. There could very well be some future midwives in there. And now, here are the finalists for the 2020 Midwife of the Year. When I found out that I was nominated, I was, yeah, rather excited, but yeah, really shocked as well. What we do as part of the Aboriginal Mothers and Babies Service, we do all the um, clients' antenatal care, basically from confirmation of pregnancy right through until the babies are eight weeks old. We just don't do the birthing bit at the hospital. I like to be able to help women and families to have the best experience that they can. If I can get women back in the door, that's the most important thing. So as long as the women feel safe to come back and yeah, ask the questions and get the answers that they, that they need. One day when at the front of the clinic, all my babies walked past in their uniforms for school for the first time. So that was pretty good as well. The best part about being a midwife is the relationships and connections that you form with the women that you're caring for and their families. Or well, some of the moments where I've felt that I've had the most impact have been uh, moments where I've been caring for women going through pregnancy loss or stillbirth, things like that. You don't have that same happiness when you leave work that you feel really you know, good about your day, you've done a really good job, but you can still feel um, very satisfied um, in knowing that you've made a difference for that woman in some way, shape or form. Hopefully she's still leaving the hospital um, feeling as though she's had an experience that wasn't made any more difficult or negative by the care that you've given. I actually was interested in midwifery just coming out of school, but I didn't actually know what a midwife was. So it wasn't until I had my own baby uh, that I saw the impact that midwifery had on, on me as a mum. I'm really passionate about Aboriginal midwifery, about making sure that they feel safe, making sure they feel heard and culturally sensitive towards their needs um, as they birth and as they welcome their new baby into the world. Just seeing them be strong and confident and empowered and just this beautiful bond in this family is just wonderful. We just saw three remarkable midwives from metropolitan and regional centres who make women-centred care their absolute priority. This year, the winner of the Midwife of the Year Award is Cindy Partridge from Nepean Hospital. a lot of women that look at you in the eyes and say that they can't do it and I can't do this, I can't do this. Holding the hand and just saying you can do this and you're doing it um, is really something that gets me every single time. Cindy is extremely woman-centred in her care, culturally sensitive and innovative in her approach to providing midwifery care. It's quite touching reading the nomination. I'd like to thank my boss Faye Matthews. She's always believed in me and always been so encouraging and so supportive. Of course I'd like to thank my husband Jason and my boys Oscar and Will. They sacrifice a lot for me to be on call 24-7. I'd like to thank my own midwife Karen Topping who looked after me for my children and inspired me to become a midwife. I'd like to thank my mum. I couldn't have done what I'm doing now without her. The other case laid midwives that I work with, the deadly Aboriginal birth workers at Nepean, the other midwives and staff at Nepean Hospital. Um, you guys are my village and I just love where I work and I love it because of you. Most importantly I want to thank my amazing clients because without them I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have the most amazing rewarding job that I do. Congratulations to Midwife of the Year. Up next, the Aboriginal Nurse or Midwife of the Year. Congratulations to our two winners and six finalists so far today. And now it's time to present the Aboriginal Nurse or Midwife of the Year. And I'm delighted to be joined by last year's recipient of this award, Elise McCarthy McFan. 
So Elise, if you think back 12 months ago, you were sitting in the auditorium and I'm sure you had a lot of butterflies going. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like when your name was announced? I was absolutely shocked um, and it was such a humbling experience to be recognised as a role model, not only within my Aboriginal community, but within New South Wales Health. Yeah. Yeah. So the last 12 months, I'm sure a lot's changed. Um, maybe you want to share some of those highlights of the last little while? Yeah, since being named the Aboriginal Nurse of the Year, I was provided many professional development opportunities and it really led to my current role as the Principal Advisor of the Aboriginal Nursing and Midwifery Strategy at the Ministry of Health. Yeah. Who knows where you might end up. Yeah. <laughs> so what might be your piece of advice to the next person um, who's going to be announced as the winner? I think be proud and be humble that you've been recognised as an Aboriginal leader within New South Wales Health. Uh, stay resilient, challenge yourself. I always led by each opportunity that I was given meant the more opportunities that I was able to give back to my Aboriginal community. So the work that you're doing is creating sustainable change within New South Wales Health. So Elise, it sounds like the last 12 months has been huge. Uh, it had a really positive impact on you, um, but also uh, the people that we're supporting as well. Yep. So well done. Thank you. So now it's time for you to pass the baton on to the winner um, of this uh, year's awards. I'm proud to present the three finalists for the Aboriginal Nurse or Midwife for 2020. To know we're having such a positive impact on people's cancer journeys, it's amazing. I, I have no words for it. My aspiration for Indigenous care in the coming years and into the future is to close that gap. Growing up with and my dad being a proud Bundjalung man, uh, he's always worked and done good for other people. He always taught me don't take something for nothing because if we just take the stereotypes and take them on board and we'll be defeated, we won't make a difference. One day in the future this won't even be a topic, there'll be no disparities, there'll be no gap to close, we'll all just be equal. Passion is definitely a key attribute, you've got to love what you do and any type of health, any career really, you will succeed in and do really well if you're passionate about it. Otherwise, it just becomes a painstaking day to day. There'll be days that are really hard, obviously, but it's about being passionate and reassuring yourself that you are doing the right thing and you are doing a good job. As an Indigenous midwife, I am fully aware of the comorbidities that affect our people. As we see a time change and the Indigenous face appear within the health setting, we found it's actually quite important. Being a, that Indigenous face and being the person that they can go, okay, well, one of us is here, so it mustn't be too bad and I'm gonna get the care that I deem is culturally safe. That's really important. There's never been a program, you know, for our Aboriginal women in the community. In August 2019, I helped start um, the Aboriginal antenatal model of care, Binya Wiyangara, in Liverpool Hospital. Binya Wiyangara is Darug for pregnant mothers. In getting this program off the ground, I was fighting for my women, um, and that was my main concern, um, to get this program up and running for their benefit. It's all about the women and the babies and that's what I was happy about. Providing that welcome space, a culturally safe space um, for our Aboriginal women and their babies. So three outstanding finalists. Wouldn't you agree, Elise? Absolutely. You could just see the passion in their stories. So the winner of the 2020 Aboriginal Nurse or Midwife of the Year is... Amelia Bowles. And Amelia is from the Cancer Institute at Coffs Harbour. It's an amazing feeling for them that they can feel safe to come to us for their care. Amelia is compassionate in her nursing care and demonstrates a unique understanding and knowledge of the cancer journey of Aboriginal patients. It's quite surreal really because it was always my goal to make differences like this to people's lives. I'd like to thank the um, many Indigenous women who paved the way for me and men, uh, nurses in particular like my dad. Manager Jill who was really supportive of instigating the Aboriginal liaison role 
my community for taking on the help of the role, my colleagues for being open to learning. And of course, my uh, partner Mitchell and my daughters, Mahalia and McKinley. I just hope that seeing me here, just this kid from Sawtell on the mid-north coast, just lets all Indigenous kids know, my children, my daughters know that they can do whatever they want in life, that anything is possible. We can make a difference and we can inspire our future generations to continue to do the same thing. I'm now delighted to present this very important award, the New to Practice Award. A strong and vibrant workforce coming through is vital for the future of our health system. And this year, nominations came in for nurses and midwives new to their professions from all across the state all of them making their mark uh, in our healthcare system as health professionals. More than 2,600 new graduates have been recruited across all of our local health districts and networks this year, the biggest intake ever. I'm sure all of them are eager to start their careers and put into practice all their learning and to express their compassion and commitment and exceptional care for each and every patient. It's especially pleasing to see that about a quarter of these new graduate nurses and midwives will commence in rural and regional locations in New South Wales. Our new graduates and nurses and midwives new to practice are its future. It's that simple. You're about to hear from three articulate, passionate and committed young nurses who between them care for children, the elderly and the vulnerable, and all of them making an impressive early career impact on their patients and their families. Here are this year's finalists for the New to Practice Award. So six months ago, around February, late February, I started working as a registered nurse as part of the Transition to Practice program. What I did with my project, I just did for patient safety, patient care and just staff safety and stuff like that. To see the safe clinical handover in practice, my project was astonishing. I never expected it to be recognised like that and I never sort of did it for that reason and when I did get recognised for it, it sort of made me think about how needed the project was. Everything can do with a little bit of change and it just takes someone to facilitate that change and especially as a new graduate coming in with a fresh perception, new graduates should understand that they can really make a difference. My experience within the first six months has been um, frightening but exciting. I recently became a father during the six months as well, so I've had to learn how to be a dad and plus a new nurse at the same time, so that's been quite difficult. Sometimes you doubt yourself when you're at work and you think, am I doing the right thing? But, you know, being nominated for this award, I think I'm on the right track. I've been a tradesman for the past 15 years, so what I came into nursing for was a bit of job stability. And I looked at nursing and I thought, oh, that looks pretty fun and pretty easy. And then when I actually jumped into nursing, I found out it was quite the opposite. It's one of the hardest jobs in the world to do. But um, I'm kind of kicking myself now that I didn't do it earlier. I've always wanted to work in neonatal. Getting to see the babies come in and they often can come in really, really sick. Um, but watching them and watching their parents sort of develop and grow as they get better and as they get closer to going home is super rewarding. Being recognised really early, I don't know, makes me excited for everything that's still to come. I love working with patients and families and other nurses, all the things that I can still learn and get really good at. So yeah, it makes me excited for everything else still to come. Seeing new to practice nurses like these, I know we can all rest assured that the future of nursing and midwifery in New South Wales looks fantastic and very skillful. We're in safe hands. In 2020, the winner of the New to Practice Award is Corey Slater from the Prince of Wales Hospital. I feel like I have changed a lot, not just as a nurse, but as a person through this first six months of my new graduate program. But when you see people get better and see people gain this confidence and independence back in their lives, it's, it's a really beautiful thing to be a part of. I haven't read this yet, so I'm quite excited to actually see what the nomination says. Corey's initiative in developing and implementing this quality improvement activity is to be commended. I feel very proud of not just myself, but um, the hospital that I work at allowing a new graduate to come in and 
sort of work with the educators. I feel like it's, um, I could be a role model for other new graduates. I'm over the moon, words can't describe how happy I am. But first of all, I'd like to thank Park Six Acute Aged Care at Prince Wales Hospital. Um, I'd like to thank Cherie Hooker, one of the educators there. Chris as well, one of the other educators for helping me with the project. I'd also like to thank my parents as well for supporting me all the way through. Thanks mum and dad, Jack and Mary and thanks Ben. Thank you for getting me the job, really appreciate it. <laughs> I hope I've done you proud. <laughs> Coming up in the show, the Nurse of the Year Awards and the Judith Mapham Leadership Award. So what makes a great nurse? Well, for me, it's a few things. Kindness, the ability to be present in the moment with the person that they are caring for. Reflection, our ability to pause and consider our skills and knowledge and to bring that to the person at the centre of our care. Support, a nurse or a midwife who can help and encourage all around them to be the best that they can possibly be. And knowledge, to always be learning and finding new ways to share their wisdom with colleagues and the really important next generation of nurses and midwives. And for the junior school children from McDonald College in Sydney Strathfield, it's something else again. Nurses are people in a hospital that helps patients. Check your temperature, they'll give you medicine and they're very special. A nurse is a wonderful person who takes care of us when we feel sick or hurt. I think the nurses are like the most bravest people in the world. I think they'll have to be very nice to the patients. Positive, happy. For sure not clumsy or angry. They need to be very, very resilient. Um, um, I think they normally wear white. It's normally in a white coat. I think it's like a green, green kind of suit. suit. They wear like a big blue costume <laughs> sort of thing. The heartbeat thing around their neck sometimes. One of those weird white hats. The little headband thing is where they have like their little plus sign on it. They always have their hair tied back. Some people think that there's just only women, but it can be boys as well. But anyone can be a nurse, except a kid might not be mature enough. like the stress and pressure. If their surgery goes wrong, it would be very bad. Finding my way around the hospital. I'd be like, which way do I go? Staying calm while seeing gross stuff. They have to do with blood. Blood, blood, blood. You're scared of blood? Sometimes getting like moles off. Pus, ew. I probably would not like to help people like go to the bathroom and stuff like that. Wipe their butts. <laughs> <laughs> If there weren't any nurses in the world, I don't think that the world would be as good as it is because there wouldn't be that extra help. It would probably have a lot of sick people and lots of plagues. If nurses didn't exist, then the doctors would be super stressed out. If I had to say one thing to all the nurses in Australia, what I would say is thank you for all your work that you've done. You're helping other people live a better life and I appreciate that. So there you have it, the real key insights on nursing. Choosing the finalists for this year's Nurse of the Year Award was a tough job. And despite the help of an expert panel of judges, we simply couldn't narrow it down to three finalists. So here are the five inspirational and outstanding finalists for the Nurse of Year 2020. I love being a nurse, like it's a good job, you, you know, it's physical, you're on your feet which is good and you're around people. It's not a chore to go to work, like I don't accept, accept night shifts. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when you turn up to work, every day is a new day. And I'm honoured that my colleagues would put this um, nomination in, it's amazing. I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> the end of life project, what I was doing was just looking at what the barriers were for why people weren't getting end of life care and communication is the main thing. Death literacy is really important, improving death literacy. I was fortunate enough to get a feedback email from a patient I was looking after. It's a massive thank you said. She was at the end of her life where 
if she, this help didn't work, that she was unfortunately going to take her life. And she said, thank you for being with me along my journey. A lot of people just said I was too hard and threw me to the side. And she said pretty much that I saved her life. And that was a pretty proud moment of my career. When you're doing this job, it's like watching a movie where you see someone that needs a lot of help, who doesn't believe in their abilities, start working on themselves and see that they start getting that hope and that influence that sometimes they might have a couple of steps back, but they ultimately achieve their goal. And it's such a great feeling when you see that transformation. I think I was nominated for Nurse of the Year because I'm very passionate about patient safety. You know, preventing deterioration um, during the hospital stay is really what I'm passionate about. I'll often work tirelessly behind the scenes. In my role currently, I'm putting in strategies and improvement um, opportunities to prevent that deterioration. In emergency department, I quite liked the unexpected. I liked that challenge, always have. So I'd been home from the bushfires for only about a week. Because COVID was now developing, there was a lot of Australians caught in Wuhan and they needed to be evacuated and there was a very short turnaround time. So they needed a team to leave the very next day. In fact, they wanted to go me that night. So I said yes, didn't have to think about it too long and with my family support and uh, off I went the next day. We were there and we were there to do one job, which was to bring the Australians home. In the last year, there's been lots of challenges, both as healthcare professionals and in the broader community. You know, Lithgow was very much affected by the bushfires. It was a time that was quite scary for people, personally and professionally. And, and then we had COVID-19. As, as a team, we'd hardly drawn breath after the bushfires diminished before we were hit with COVID. And the, the, so my approach was to really encourage the nurses to see themselves as part of the solution. I might come to work and there might be a family caring for a loved one dying at home. Initially they may feel that they can't do it. The wonderful thing about doing a job like mine is that you work with a family and you provide them with the tools and with the support that they need to support their family member and there's just so much job satisfaction in that. I'm sure now you can see why we had so much trouble with this award. All those finalists exemplify excellence in nursing, which is why this year we've also chosen two winners. So the winners of the Nurse of the Year are Patricia Lemon from the Mid-North Coast Local Health District and Kieran Preston from Wagga Bay's Hospital. To have won this Nurse of the Year Award for 2020, I feel very thankful for having a very exciting and um, fulfilling nursing career over the years. Trisha's exceptionally strong work ethic, commitment to safety and quality and ability to perform under intense pressure are recognised and sought after within the health and emergency sectors. I feel quite honoured that uh, my manager and my, the director I work under feel that of me. I'd like to thank a couple of few people. Jeanette Mills, who's my manager, who's incredibly supportive and always encouraging. And Vicky Simpson, our district director of nursing, who's an inspiration. And also my family, my, direct, my husband and my children, who have only ever been supportive of everything I do. With my role, it's very patient focused. You have to be on the floor all the time. So the first comment I've got is, Kieran is passionate about nursing care. He's always non-judgmental in his interactions with consumers. Kieran's most recognised and appreciated trait is his empathy to others. Having won this nomination, I think it is a surprise to me because there's so many amazing nurses out there. I don't see it as an award for myself, I see it as an award for me and my team. There's multiple people I'm thankful for to be in this position. I've got a lovely wife, my managers, my team, the people that we look after, like they've made such an impact to me as I feel I've made to them. With me winning this award, I hope this inspires more people wanting to work in mental health, either as a nurse or other associated roles, because it's such a rewarding position to be in. Up next, the Judith Mepham Leadership Award and the Healing Heart Award. My congratulations to all the finalists and winners so far today and to all those who are watching today. I want to thank you for your interest and support of our wonderful nurses and midwives. Our second last award today 
is the Judith Meppham Leadership Award. The award is named in honour of the first chief nurse in New South Wales, Judith Meppham, whose own leadership and insight helped raise the profile of nursing in midwifery, setting the scene for days like today. I'm sometimes asked what makes a great leader? There are many things I could say, but I do believe it is someone who can recognise and nurture the potential in others. Someone who is able to share their wisdom and knowledge with others and has the ability to inspire teams. We also asked a group of leaders from across New South Wales Health to give us their thoughts on leadership, especially in times of challenge. What makes a great leader? From my perspective, um, and thinking of the great nursing leaders I've met in my time, I think it's about purpose, vision, and the ones that I truly remember, inspiration. I think it's somebody that's approachable, that's understanding, that's consistent with their actions and uh, the way that they present themselves. For me, a good leader is around commitment, having courage, and they simply care about what they do. It's being with their, with their own teams, being seen. Um, I always think a smile, you know, regardless of how difficult things can be. There's a, a certain generosity of spirit, um, a warmth um, that makes people want to be with them and to work with them and to be better themselves for them as well as for the work they're doing. The essence is that you find your own voice. You figure out why I want to lead, what I'd like to say, how I'd like to do it, what I'd like to achieve and what I'd like to be remembered for. My advice is take opportunities. Don't, you know, push yourself don't just pigeonhole yourself into one area and be brave, be bold and just take that step. Seek out mentors, seek out coaches. You've got lots of them in New South Wales Health. One person that I deeply admire who I worked for for a number of years. One day I was going for a job interview and she rang me and she said, Willie, be yourself. And it was the best advice that I think I've probably been given in my professional life developed that deliberate habit of reflecting on my practice of leadership. Not to beat yourself up, uh, no one's perfect, but to see it as a, your, your life as a leader is something that keeps unfolding and you're always going to learn. I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to recognise such great um, nurses and midwives that we have within our profession. So I think it's really important that we do this as often as we can and celebrating not just success in terms of outcomes for our patients, but success for ourselves and for our teams is actually part of what leadership is all about. So now to the finalists for the Judith Meppham Leadership Award 2020. From public health to emergency disaster response, they are shining examples of health professionals at their best. My role in, in public health is to manage the team and our role is to respond to notifications of communicable disease and with the response to COVID we had to surge very quickly, probably almost doubled or tripled in size within the space of a couple of weeks. What a good leader is somebody that supports their staff, that encourages their staff to be the best that they can be. As a leadership skill you've, you've got to be resilient particularly in, in things like COVID so I try to be resilient or try to make sure that my staff have, have got things in place to sort of build on that as well, I think. Being nominated, I feel really honoured. It was a real surprise to get the, the email. I didn't know that my team had nominated me, so yeah, it's amazing. The real threat to Batemans Bay was on New Year's Eve and the sky changed and it went really, really scary. It went on for days, but my role basically at the end of the day, if I think about it, now it was to make sure the patients were cared for in the best possible way, so safety and quality, and that the staff were also considered in every way. We still had our New Year's Eve sips. There was 
sparkling water, the staff all had a cheer, everyone had a cuddle and it put a bit of life back into a horrible, horrible day. Being nominated for the Leadership Award, very, very uh, humble and very thankful to all uh, my team and especially my peers for nominating me. Back home, uh, like nursing is not a, uh, like a career for male. My dad was a little bit flat upset when he was like, oh, you, where are you going with this career? You know, it's something very female dominated back home. But when he came here, he got to see, oh, it's completely different. Like you're really helping and making a difference to those patients' life. I told my parents that I was nominated for the leadership award. So very, very proud. Uh, uh, of my achievement, but mainly, you know, I told them I was featured uh, on a local newspaper. So I cropped that article and sent it back to them, and they were very proud. So uh, they printed out, had it framed, showed it to the neighbors, the family, and everyone uh, back home. If I had to describe 2020 in three words, it would be unpredictable, frantic, and rewarding. So some of the challenges um, that I've faced as a disaster manager in the last 12 months has been the fires that um, the Shellhaven experienced. We had the East Coast low, which there was a lot of flooding. Um, and then um, the pandemic started, and that was probably what was most challenging in the last 12 months. I'm proud that I've been nominated. I'm proud that I'm a nurse. Um, you know, I've said this before, I'm a third generation nurse. I have a daughter that's a fourth generation nurse. So I'm proud to be a nurse. I think it's the only profession I've ever wanted to do. The Judith Meppham Leadership Award goes to Lisa Wilson from Batemans Bay Hospital. A good leader to me is open and honest and respectful, respectful workplace. So during a time of measurable fear and loss, the Batemans Bay community turned to their local hospital in need. There they found the unwavering strength and resilience of Lisa as she called, I don't... The first sentence does hit me because it's not about me, this was about the team. And we did look after vulnerable and we did look after unwell and stranded people, but together we did it as a team, not just Lisa. I'd like to thank the ED team at Batemans Bay Hospital. I'd like to thank Leanne Ovington, who was guiding me from the Emergency Operations Centre. I'm Lisa Kendi, the General Manager, coming in, leaving her hubby at home who'd just been had surgery and coming in, Beck O'Reilly, the NUM. All of the staff, the ward staff, the ED staff, the staff coming up from Maria to help us in ED via police escort. And I'd like them to be standing here with me now because it's a team effort. Coming up is the Healing Heart Award. That sounds like a very nice one, doesn't it? Everything we do as nurses and midwives is for patients, women, their families and carers, and of course, our communities. Exceptional care for the patients and consumers of our healthcare system is our driving force. And it's our very reason for coming to work each and every day. So for the last award of the day and the, the last award of the year, the Consumer Nominated Healing Heart Award, I'm joined by a very, very special guest, our co-presenter, Ms. Louisa Hope. As many of you would know, Louisa and her mother survived the terrifying Lint Cafe siege in Sydney almost six years ago. Mm. And it was a subsequent time spent by being cared for by nurses in hospital that inspired Louisa to ensure something good would come from that experience. In fact, my old stamping ground, the Prince of Wales Hospital. So Louisa, I'd love for you to talk to you a little bit about your story and why you're so passionate about nurses. Well, you know, Jackie, after the siege, um, mm. it was just such an awful thing for our whole country, really, that I just felt that we had to get something good out of it. So after having been cared for the nurses for, you know, three months, a long time, mm. and uh, I realised that, um, you know, they really were special and deserve to be acknowledged. So we started the Louisa Hope Fund for Nurses at Prince of Wales, and it's now also at um, the Nepean Hospital. Yeah. So yes, that's been my absolute joy. And look, you've been an absolute advocate uh, for nurses and mm. for midwives mm. across the state. Yes. And we love having you as our consumer representative. Mm. Um, I think you've been on the panel right from the, the word go. Yeah. What are some of the highlights for you around when you're looking for the Consumer of the Award? What are you looking for? Oh, Jackie, I have to tell you that the Consumer Award and actually the whole Nursing Award process is terrifying. Yeah. Because, you know, all of these nurses, they do such incredible things. And I'm just a patient, you know. 
Uh, but I come um, and I look for the nurse that brings just that something else, that something of her own heart or his own heart. You know, that makes all the difference when you're lying in the bed and you're totally dependent. Yeah. Mm. So thinking back to that time when you were at Prince of Wales Hospital, mm. what would you say would be the top three? What were the things that stood out mm. for you around nursing care? Well, first of all, I just was astounded at nurses, uh, their professionalism, you know, right? They absolutely have their clinical care down pat. They've nailed it. So there was that, but also there was that gentle kind of compassion where they really thought about me and, you know, with everything that was going on at the time, they really protected me in lots of ways. But also I have to say, Jackie, that, you know, the nurses who came with a bit of a laugh, you know, we shared that moment. It was really just lifted the whole thing. So I was grateful for that. I think as nurses, we find it really hard to talk about what we do, but you've Mm. summed it up so beautifully. (laughs) And it's so nice to hear the difference that they made for you during that really difficult time. Mm, Thank you. On that note, let's meet the finalists for the Healing Heart Award for 2020. By being nominated for the Healing Heart Award, I feel really overwhelmed and I just can't believe it, to be honest. In April, um, I was asked to go out to assess an elderly couple, um, Fred and Julie. So during uh, uh, Fred's six-week stay at Royal North Shore Hospital, um, I knew that he was alone. His family were unable to visit him due to um, the COVID-19 virus that he still had. And so I knew that um, doing those small little gestures of just popping in to say hello and making sure that he was all right, and I knew that that would probably make him feel more at ease. So what was just an average day to me, uh, being a nurse, um, turned out to be something really special to Fred and his family. Uh, So so often we have a plan for birth, um, which is a a normal process. We should also be thinking that it's normal to have a plan for death, because that also is a normal process. And we need to normalise those discussions. The fact that this family or this lady has thought to nominate me when she's had such a massive loss is just humbling, really quite humbling. I think um, palliative care has quite a a bad name, so I think the fact that a palliative care nurse has been nominated has been, you know, it's quite humbling. Um, You take it for everybody that you work with. They've all had a part in, in, in sort of helping this family. To be nominated for the Healing Heart Award for Nursing Excellence is really humbling and amazing and when I found out I was a finalist I was trying not to cry in the office because I was that sort of yeah humbled. What I've learned as as my time in a nurse the best resource we can have is the person we're working with. He's taught me a huge amount along the way about his life and the challenges and and we've worked through some really challenging issues which have included homelessness, significant physical health problems, mental health challenges and just adjusting back to living in society after 30 years of jail and I don't think there's any higher recognition that you can get from work than someone's life that you've helped them to change. Stories like that remind me of why I'm so incredibly proud of the nurses and midwives of New South Wales and how important it is for us to all reflect on the impact and the influence that we have on the care that we provide to our patients, their families and to our community. So Louisa, I'd now like to hand over to you to announce the winner of this year's award. Thank you, Jackie. So now the winner of the Healing Heart Award for 2020 is Mike Smith from the Prince of Wales HIV Outreach Team. I'm really humbled and honoured to receive the Healing Heart Award for 2020. It's overwhelming, but also a very, very proud moment for me. Mike has helped me to adjust to life after serving 33 years in jail. Mike has never judged me for my crimes and has listened to me and helped me make decisions that have helped me to stay healthy and not return to jail. Uh, I can think I'm doing a good job and I can tell everyone I'm doing a good job, but when someone who I'm working with tells me I'm doing a good job, I I know I am. I'd like to acknowledge David Murray who's 
a long time nurse in the HIV field who set up our team and gave me the opportunity to work in, in this team and gave me the opportunity to work and develop my own, my own practice. But also to acknowledge all the nurses over the years who I've worked with who have helped to mould me as the clinician I am. And I think finally I, I'd like to acknowledge my, my wife Rose who supports me you know, when the job's good but also when it's tough. Congratulations to our first ever Healing Heart Award recipient, Mike Smith, a nurse who lives and breathes the core values of exceptional care every time. And a huge heartfelt congratulations to all of our winners and finalists for 2020. Louisa, thank you so much for being here with us today and for being such a strong advocate for our nurses and midwives. Oh, Jackie, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. And a thank you to all of you for your company, for watching and helping us to celebrate the awards wherever you happen to be around New South Wales today. Most of all, I'd like to thank all of the nurses and midwives in New South Wales for your daily dedication and the difference that you make to patient care. You should all be very proud of the work that you do, how you do it and why you do it. These awards are for you. So we'll see you next year and that might even be face to face. So under your chair is your nomination. Oh no. So do you want me to read this out? Oh, so I've got to read this about me. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Oh God, I have to read it out loud. What now? Oh God, I don't want to read it, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Michael is a kind, genuine person. In conjunction with these traits, Nisha, I can't even say my own name. She always goes the extra mile to ensure that every woman receives the highest level of care. He truly leads by example. He is the glue that holds this unit together. He has worked hard to improve the workplace culture. Leading her team with integrity, enthusiasm and a can-do attitude. Her strength of character and acceptance in the face of setbacks is inspirational. Um, a little bit teary actually. <laughs> very humbling actually. It's very humbling. And I think I'm going to cry again. <laughs> is it awkward reading about yourself like that? It is, because <laughs> you think, oh, that's me. I wish I'd read this beforehand. <laughs> I feel like then it wouldn't be quite so dramatic. 